Hello and welcome back to NHB Retro. Today I've got a really neat machine on the bench out in the garage today. Um, this is a Dream Commodore 64. And it's a, obviously a C64C. Um, it, those of you who watch this channel may have been able to surmise that I am very much into bootleg computers, off-brand computers, computers that are unusual, at least for the area I'm in. I really enjoy that, and so that makes me very um, interested in Dream, because that's this is, isn't something that you see that often here in North America. Uh, so this is a computer that I purchased off of uh, an auction site, let's say, <laughs> from its home country. These were uh, manufactured in Argentina, um, and while it was sold to me as tested and working, it did. I didn't get to see inside the machine before I purchased it, which um, always makes me a little bit uneasy, but frankly, I've had extremely good luck um, with very honest uh, sellers. Um, anyway, this machine, uh, like I said, when I got here, it, it did not work for me. <laughs> I'm not trying to point any fingers at anybody for sure, but yeah, for me, it did not work. Um, so let's take a look inside and just I'll show you some of the things I found. I um, already got the screws out here, so we'll just pop this off. Need to pop the keyboard out before we take the disconnect the LED. So let's just do that. Totally standard stuff here. Disconnect this LED, and we'll set this aside for now. So um, the issue that I found when I opened the machine for the first time was that this voltage regulator had become disconnected from the board. And now, um, if I'm not mistaken, these originally were connected to this piece as a support. However, at some point in this machine's life, which appears to have been long, <laughs> um, that what support was missing. So I can totally believe that this heavy heat sink, which is only supported at this point by the legs of the regulator, could have gotten flexed back and forth um, and fallen off. So, I mean, you know, that does happen. Um, so I replaced that. And then as I was doing that, I started getting a much better look at some of the other parts of this machine. So. I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, with the covers off, we can see uh, all the chips are present. That, of course, was my first fear when I <laughs> power cycled this machine, is with it, that it would be actually missing chips, but it's not. They're all there. Um, we've got the uh, Argentine PAL N, I believe, version of, um, of the VIC 2. I wasn't even aware that there were different flavors of PAL before I got this machine. Um, you can see some signs of work <laughs> that has been done. Uh, obviously, the the shield was removed from the was desoldered long ago, which is no problem. Got an interesting little diode there that I not sure about that. Um, yeah, someone's been doing stuff down here. Um, but all pretty reasonable, actually. You know, nothing super scary. I mean, I think, <laughs> I, I suspect that's totally not a, uh, <laughs> a factory bodge there. And there are some other bodges. So yeah, it's been, it's been used a lot. Um, and, you know, taken care of, I guess, uh, or at least fixed. So, again, I'm not super familiar with uh, Commodore 64 C's in general, so I don't know how much of this might be uh, common repairs that get done over the years. Let's go ahead and flip it over on the back and um, take a look at the underside of the circuit board. Okay, so this is the bottom side of the circuit board. Right away, we can, of course, see that, um, yes, there have been some some bodges and mods made. Um, again, not sure under what circumstances these might be standard, normal bodges. 
This one in particular is pretty interesting. This whole area, uh, you can see there's a number of pads that have been ripped off. Um, and then, I mean, even on my worst day, <laughs> hopefully I don't ever damage a board like this. And this, this has a bodge that goes around to the front. There's a lot of solder residue. There are some, well, it looks like a via that's not soldered. Um, yeah. So in general, a, a probably a, a board that has uh, seen its fair share of use and abuse. Um, let's uh, move on. Here's just a quick look at that bodge that runs all the way over to the other side. I'm guessing that they just needed ground there. So interesting. <laughs> Again, hopefully someone who knew what they were doing better than they knew how to do it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to, let's move on to actually addressing the keyboard. Okay, I've got the Dream hooked up to uh, a television and going through um, a converter that will allow us to view the, the uh, PAL uh, video signal. So here we go, let's just turn it on. I've got the dead test cartridge in here right now. There's my reflection in the black screen. You can see it does say PAL N. All right, and we're booted into the dead test cartridge. The video does not look great, but then again, I'm, I am converting it. Um, and I think these later C64Cs were kind of known for their somewhat mushy um, video output anyway. So I do have a, a, a capture device on the way, which hopefully will work um, better for this. Um, but anyway, it, it, it's working and um, I'll cut to the chase here. It, it goes through this whole test. Everything seems fine. It does actually test the um, the the SID, and the SID is it, it seems fine as well. So that's all really good news. Um, so now let's get back to looking at that keyboard and see if we can get this thing actually 100% uh, tested and working. So I've got the Dream uh, hooked back up to the the television. Just want to demonstrate uh, the keyboard issues that I'm seeing. Um, so, for instance, yeah, the N key doesn't work, which makes it really hard to run things. Um, let's see, the semicolon does not work. Hopefully you can hear. Oh, every once in a while one comes through. Most of the other keys um, didn't work at first, but then when I started sort of hitting them repeatedly, well, some of them are still pretty iffy, but yeah, N for sure. Never got an N to work, which makes it kind of hard to run my test program, for instance. So that's what we want to address. Hopefully, that's just a matter of cleaning the keyboard contacts. So let's do that real quick and see where that gets us. Alrighty, I've got the approximately 1,000 screws <laughs> taken out of the back of this keyboard that you need to uh, remove in order to disassemble it. I've uh, desoldered the shift lock, that one switch there. And let's take a look at what we got. Okay, this looks pretty reasonable. I'm not seeing anything too untoward right off the bat. Soldering job isn't necessarily the best, but that could certainly be factory. Um, and so, yeah, my guess is that we just have an issue with some of these pads. They do look dirty. Let's see, end would be down here somewhere. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and um, clean all those off with isopropyl, probably put some contact cleaner on there, uh, and... Put, put it back together. The um, the key switches, or the rather the springs and the stems, didn't spot anything that looked particularly alarming there. So yeah, let's go ahead and clean these these contacts off and see if that gets us a working keyboard. Okay, I've got the keyboard hooked back up to the Dream. 
let's boot it up and see how successful our key cleaning was. Okay, so remember the end key in particular did not work at all. Okay, well that's pretty cool. So let's just uh, space bar still. Oh, oh boy, some of them are still a little sticky. Um, this may be painful. <laughs> Okay, spacebar might still needs a little more exercising. Well, oh, some of the keys are still a little bit sticky. That will work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I was not able to do that before. Um, I'm gonna call that uh, pretty much a win. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, there we go. Probably uh, maybe a little bit more working into the keys to get it fully working, but a lot better than it was. Um, uh, and, and actually, given the, the state of the machine otherwise, pretty cool that it works as much as it does. So I'm going to get it fully reassembled, and then I'll have some final thoughts. And with that, the Dream is all back together. Um, Cosmetically, it's in really nice shape. There's a couple small marks that we'll probably clean off really easily. Uh, let me show you the back side so you just get to see the stickers. Very neat. Not your standard Commodore branding. Um, yeah, so yeah, all in all, pretty cool machine. Um, I think I after seeing the inside of it, I think I got pretty lucky that it basically works. Uh, I think the space bar just needs to get exercised a little bit and it'll work fine. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy. Um, my major takeaway from this is that if you're going to buy a machine that you haven't seen inside, you know, just be prepared for it maybe not to be as tested and working as the person said. Um, yeah, uh, all in all, I mean, what I do basically almost all I do now <laughs> these days is fix these machines and make videos about them. So for me, it wasn't a huge downside. Uh, you know, something simple like the power regulator needing a new one. I have those Those are like 10 cents a piece. Um, and it appears so far that the, you know, the keyboard just needed to be cleaned. So yeah, all in all, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I, I wish that I hadn't paid what I would consider to be full price for a tested and working machine, for a machine that turned out not to be working. But again, not, not a huge deal. If I hadn't been able to get it working, that would have been uh, something else entirely. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this um, interesting uh, Commodore variation. Um, it's my first uh, PAL machine. It's my first C64C machine. So yeah, all in all, pretty neat thing to add to the collection. Um, and I, I pretty much had a good time fixing it. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed, and I will catch you on the next one.